Make sure we get organized here. Ready to go? Okay, good morning everyone. Thank you for being here today. Uh, nearly two years ago, the first COVID-19 case in Manitoba was confirmed. And make no mistake about it, uh, that through the pandemic, uh, a lot of the health measures that have been in place have been implemented, have been uh, items that really are been needed to protect Manitobans, but have obviously has caused significant challenges for businesses uh, and individuals in Manitoba. Throughout the pandemic, We've provided resources for our healthcare system, our children in schools, protecting Manitobans, including business owners who have made significant sacrifices, ensuring Manitobans have continued access to goods and services when they need them most. Despite facing hardships and uncertainty, our business community has been very resilient through this uh, whole process and innovative at uh, doing what they do best, adapting to changing public health orders and adapting their businesses and finding innovative reach, uh, ways to reach out to customers and clients uh, doing it in a safe way. As uh, trusted community partners, uh, they followed the public health orders, ensured compliance by the public and made uh, their workplaces safe for employees and customers. And throughout the difficult times, our government has worked closely with the business community and industry partners to listen to the concerns and seek input about the supports they needed and when they needed it most. Though through continued engagement and dialogue, the collective insight of businesses, industry and economic development partners have helped inform and guide a lot of the business support programs that we put, a lo put in place along the way through the course of the pandemic over the last almost two years. The uncertainty risks associated with the, uh, with the new variant poses new threats to our business community and requires a comprehensive and urgent response. Accordingly, we are acting to provide financial supports to Manitoba businesses most impacted by uh, public health orders. Uh, since uh, the pandemic has be began, and actually in the last budget, we put a $1.18 billion in the budget for health care and other COVID-related uh, costs, including business uh, supports. This has enabled us to support businesses at a critical time when they're being asked to reduce capacity in certain industries to make sure that Manitobans are safe. It's estimated that close to uh, 1,800 businesses impacted by the recent, uh, recent health orders will benefit uh, Manitobans. In all total, there's uh, been about uh, 38,000 businesses that have been supported, or almost one-third of uh, businesses. Uh, just in terms of some of the grant programs uh, we have, we've got the bridge grant program we've uh, identified where businesses could get the support of upwards of 20,000 uh, for individuals, the GAP program. Wage uh, support program, you may recall that's $5,000 per employee. There is upwards of uh, almost 16,000 employees that benefited from this and 4,000 businesses. We provided sector support uh, to places like the hotel uh, sector. There's $8 million that were dedicated towards them, as well as $8 million to arts and culture sector. A sick leave program, about 1,400 businesses have been supported and uh, over 6,000 people, as well as long-term supports for businesses through the Manitoba Chamber of Commerce, through the digital uh, and retrain uh, Manitoba. So there's been a lot of supports that are in place. With that, I'll turn over to Minister Reyes to outline the program we're announcing here today. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fielding, and good morning, everyone. Before I start, I want to say a sincere thank you to all the frontline healthcare workers for doing their best to protect Manitobans during these uncertain times. My wife is a nurse at the Health Sciences Centre in Winnipeg, so I understand the challenges and the dedication of the frontline healthcare workers. Thank you again to her, her colleagues, and all who contribute to our healthcare system in keeping Manitobans safe. I also want to thank the Premier for her leadership and commitment to protecting Manitobans and supporting Manitoba's economy as two of the many priorities she outlined in the throne speech last month. Today, we are pleased to announce a program of up to $22 million in direct financial relief to Manitoba businesses impacted by the latest public health orders put in place as we monitor the severity and impacts of the Omicron variant. This new, the sector support program will provide direct financial support in the form of grants of up to $12,000 to eligible Manitoba businesses across the province. The program will support sectors impacted through the latest set of public health restrictions and required to operate at 50% capacity. This includes dine-in full-service restaurants, bars, theatres, concert halls, museums, recreation and sports facilities, gyms, hotels 
and resorts at reduced capacity. Financial support through the program will be scaled based on business size, with grants calculated based on the number of employees. Eligible businesses will receive $3,000 if they have 1 to 9 employees, $6,000 if they have 10 to 19 employees, $9,000 if they have 20 to 49 employees, and $12,000 if they have more than 50 employees. This program will help provide Manitoba businesses the flexibility to deploy resources where needed the most and sustain their businesses in the coming weeks. More information, including the full eligibility criteria and how to apply, will be available on our government's COVID-19 support for business page in the next few days. As a previous small business owner, I understand the challenges businesses face, and that is why our government is eager and committed to helping Manitoba businesses remain open, keep Manitobans employed, and for all of us to spend the holidays with friends and family in a safe way. And we'll continue to listen to the needs of businesses as we move forward, and we will be flexible and respond to your needs in the coming weeks. I look forward to sharing more details as they are finalized over the coming days. Our government's number one priority is to protect the personal and financial health and well-being for all Manitobans. I want to remind Manitobans that vaccination is our best defense against COVID-19, especially as we fight this new variant. I just received my booster shot earlier this week. I want to encourage all Manitobans to get fully vaccinated, including getting a third dose when eligible. I want to thank the majority of Manitobans who have rolled up their sleeves to protect themselves, their loved ones, and their community. Manitoba has one of the most successful vaccine campaigns, and it is because of Manitobans' efforts that we have been able to keep our businesses open thus far, and it will help us to keep these businesses safely open. Until then, we are dedicated to supporting our business community through this challenging time. Thank you. Question time? Go ahead. All right. Um, okay, so we, the elder, and forgive me, I haven't read the, the details were just published right as we were finishing up, Minister, so forgive me. Uh, the eligibility here, if people have received money before under any other program, does that make them ineligible for these funds? No, they can apply. Uh, the, the health orders is directly related uh, to the health orders, right? So if you're a restaurant, uh, if you're a theater, if you're a gym, right, those are types of businesses that have, uh, through the health orders, been reduced capacity up to 50%. So they can apply no matter uh, if they've uh, been in bridge grant programs or other programs that we've had, wage subsidies, all the other programs that have been in place. And it's based on the amount of employees um, that you have. And one of the things we heard earlier in the pandemic at various times uh, under both federal and provincial programs is that businesses that opened up, what's the cutoff for businesses having to start operation? Was it, is there a date in December that they had to open in order to apply? Some newer businesses, for example, weren't eligible for some of the federal or provincial funding. Before. Yeah, newer businesses uh, are, will be accepted in the program. They will be? Yeah. Okay, is there a cutoff in the month of December? Uh, we'll get back to you with some details in respect to that, but newer businesses have, uh, have and will be accepted into the program. So before, uh, now we're you know, almost two years into this pandemic, right? We had some parameters of businesses that being started, started up. So we'll be able to get some more details in respect when it does come online, but new businesses will be accepted into the program. If they're pre-existing, they were pre-existing before this started up, of course. Thank you for that very much. Uh, in the event that uh, restrictions need to increase further or last longer, what's the plan? Well, number one, um, you know, as we go through the pandemic, you know, we kind of outlined a lot of the support programs that have been in place. And, uh, Bart, you know, for the most part, um, depends on where you are in the restrictions. We've done programs like the, the grant program, the bridge grant program, when, you know, I guess people are completely shut down. We've done wage support programs. That's kind of when people are kind of in a rebuilding stage, maybe in summer when the variants are, or the, you know, there isn't as many cases here in Manitoba. So it really depends on, on the process going forward. What I can say is uh, we allocate about $1.1 billion in our budget. We've got a lot of money left over to support uh, individuals. That's not just for the business sector, that's for health.
health and education. Um, and so, you know, right now we're dealing with uh, a situation where businesses have been asked, they still are open, of course, but uh, our reduced capacity up to 50%. We recognize, obviously, it's a busy time of year for restaurants and others. Um, so as we go forward, we want to continue to work with the business communities on what that will look like. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be guided on any, if there is any additional health orders that are in place. But there is substantial uh, uh, money available to support businesses as we go forward. That question are there any plans maybe to um, make like a longer term program that kind of ebbs and flows as the pandemic does for businesses yeah if you talk if you if you listen to what some of the business uh, community I know Lauren Rem, uh, Remillard has, has talked about this is the Manitoba or Winnipeg Chamber of Commerce right to kind of using almost like an accordion right so we want to make sure that uh, businesses have the predictability with this now the reality is these health orders are in place to the 11th so we think that the program we've introduced up to twelve thousand dollars for businesses that have been impacted uh, that could be about eighteen hundred businesses maybe about a thousand restaurants in and themselves uh, they'd be supported but we're going to continue to work with the business community as it relates to that but yes there will be definitely more support in place if need be if the if let's say if the restrictions uh, are further uh, if there's further measures that are needed but uh, right now we believe this program uh, will benefit about 1800 uh, businesses they could get up to about twelve thousand uh, dollars of support depending on how big they are I think I've told you before, you know, uh, as Minister of Economic Development and Jobs, we've had routine stakeholder calls uh, with the uh, business community, uh, along with uh, the public health official on the call. So prior to restrictions going out, uh, we work in a collaborative way to ensure that uh, the public health officials are aware of the concerns of the business community, but all making sure that we uh, serve them uh, safely. And you guys said more um, information would be out in the coming days online. Can people, like, is there a specific date that people can expect when they can start looking or start applying? And, yeah, yeah, we anticipate the, the website will be up and running uh, by early next week. They can apply to the end of January. So businesses, you know, restaurants, uh, you know, and others are in uh, busy seasons, obviously, with Christmas that are happening. So businesses can apply from any time from uh, really next week when the program is up and running uh, up until the end of January. They apply. Uh, be very easy process for them to check off. Uh, they've obviously got to test to kind of the items that are on there, uh, and they're able to get money. So similar towards the bridge grant program, they'll apply for it, and then we'll we'll uh, give the money directly into the bank accounts. Uh, generally, we do that on the Fridays, right? So if someone applies on the Monday. Once the program's open, they'll get their money uh, in their bank account by Friday. So that's been a big part of making sure it's flexible, easy to access program, and so been some, some success with that in previous programs so that will be the same approach uh, that will happen uh, but again uh, the website will be up and running by early next week and you can apply for it to the end of January all right folks we'll take a few calls from our zoom session up first this morning from CBC Radio Canada Emil Hi there. Um, I was wondering, is this program limited only to sectors most impacted by the pandemic or other sectors might uh, qualify as well? Yeah, so this program is guided towards uh, the industries that have been impacted, right, have been uh, ordered through the health orders to reduce capacity up to 50%. So that's uh, restaurants. There's about a thousand restaurants we think will apply for a program like this. Uh, that's gyms and fitness centers. Like that's, you know, if you've got a curling club and you've got maybe a grill that you've, you know, that, that is open right where you're serving some food that would apply. Um, you know, other things like movie theaters, MTC, these types of things. Those are the types of businesses that can apply. So we anticipate this should have a positive impact on about uh, 1,800 businesses. Um, and it could be upwards of $22 million. All right, so that would be only uh, businesses that are limited in capacity. Um, is the amount of grants only based on the number of employees or is this uh, based as well on the financial impact of COVID? Uh, uh, it's it's guided. This program, uh, in particular, is guided towards the impacts of the recent health orders that have been put out. So, again, if restaurants and and movie theaters and gyms they've been reduced capacity up to fifty percent. So it's guided towards uh, guided towards those areas. The, uh, you know, they don't have to prove uh, that they've been financially impacted. Just the fact that they've been reduced through the health orders uh, would be in itself. So the only criteria is the amount of businesses, uh, amount of employees you have. So again, you can apply to up to twelve thousand dollars. 
uh, a little bit less for other industries, but maybe if you go down Cordon, for instance, and you see one of the restaurants there, right, they probably have upwards of 20, you know, 20, uh, 20 or more employees. So they would they'd be able to apply for about $9,000 of support. From CHVN, Taylor. Hi, good morning. Uh, what's being done for, let's say, like a restaurant or even a shop that has to close because uh, all or most of their staff are out, uh, you know, doing COVID testing? Um, what about them with, you know, that profits that they could potentially lose because of that? Are, are you talking about the, the labor you're saying if, if people are being vaccinated? Well, not, no. Uh, so let's say, you know, restaurant, um, 18 out of their 20 staff members um, are going for COVID testing. The restaurant has to close for the day. What about them? Well, I would say uh, we do have, um, uh, and we just extended it recently, there's a sick leave program that's in place. Uh, so that's kind of a, on a longer term basis. So if someone gets sick, for instance, what the province would provide is upwards of $600. Uh, there's kind of two federal programs that kick in after uh, a week time period. Uh, and so far with our sick leave program where the businesses can apply and obviously pay the employee, uh, there's been about, uh, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of um, um, uh, just over 6,000 people that have applied through that program and about 1,400 businesses that would be there. So that would be, um, you know, really one of the programs that people could tap into, obviously, if there's a sick leave uh, parameter that's that's uh, in place. Thanks. And uh, what, are, what are you telling businesses who are looking at the potential surge in cases about whether or not they should be preparing to close or what kind of things they should be thinking about in a month's time? Well, right now, you know, the program that we have in place right now is, is really directly related to the health advice and the health orders that Dr. Rusin and uh, Minister Gordon had put forward. Um, we want to continue to work with uh, the business industry, and if you you know talk to people like uh, Chuck Davidson or Lauren Remlard through the Chambers of Commerce, I think what what their opinion is to just make sure there's some predictability for businesses, so they know that the government will be providing some sort of supports if there's uh, additional need to kind of prolong kind of the, some of the health orders in place or make some changes uh, that's in place. So we're very much committed to working with the business organizations on what that uh, that may look like. From Global News, Will. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, just wondering, Minister, if you can tell us what sort of consultations were done with those in the industry to arrive at uh, the details of this program? You know what, uh, uh, this past weekend, I mean, once uh, we knew uh, the, what restrictions were were announced, uh, you know, we took a proactive approach, our, our, our government did, and I was on the phone call with all our global representatives from the business community, including the Winnipeg Chamber, uh, the Restaurant uh, in, uh, Association, the Hotel Association, and you know what, uh, we had talks, and we had, I had talks with my colleague here, Mr. Um, Fielding, uh, with regards to the support, and that's how we came up with, in terms of the feedback that we got from, uh, from uh, the uh, business community. Yeah, and further, what Minister Reyes had said, uh, you know, I personally spoke to uh, Chuck Davidson last night, Lauren Remillard. I spoke to just Scott Jostin from the Hotel Association, which obviously is also part of uh, uh, this group. And so there's uh, there's pretty big, big substantial uh, uh, consultations with the business community, and we've tried to do that. And uh, what they've emphasized to us is uh, make sure there's some supports and some predictability for businesses to make sure that we're there uh, on a long ter longer term basis. So it isn't necessarily could be just a one time program, but if there's a need for extending these orders, and again, I don't have information relate to that, that's more Dr. Rusin's uh, would, would it give any indication on that, but um, you know, we'd be there to work with the business community on additional supports if need be. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, and can you just talk a little bit about the dollar amount here? Is this specifically intended to cover lost wages or actual lost business or, or how did you arrive at these figures? Well, we wanted a, a support program. So right now across the country, uh, the only uh, province that I know that has introduced some sort of supports with the restrictions, I believe is Nova Scotia. Now I haven't seen if BC's introduced anything today or Ontario, but we wanted to make sure we're there to support businesses uh, in their time of need. And so we wanted to make sure that there's a, a certain amount of uh, money put away. Uh, what we did hear from the business community, uh, specifically as it relates to some restaurants, some businesses, you know, if you've got to hire employees, 
um, you know, maybe more impacted by it than others. And so we want a kind of a bit of a sliding scale. So this is a bit of a difference from what we've done before, but it's really based on what we heard from the business community. Um, you know, businesses still are open at 50% capacity, right? So you still can go to restaurants, you still can go to gyms, and you can still go to type of events, but they certainly are restricted uh, in respect to that. So we wanted to provide a, enough support to, to get us through these health orders. We're going to continue to work with the business community as it relates to other programs, if need be, uh, in the future. From the Brandon Sun, Drew. Thank you. Um, why uh, did the province decide to make the money scalable this time to the number of employees when in the past, I believe, with the bridge grant, um, it was just $5,000 regardless of the business size? Well, that's something we heard from the business community, right? They would said, well, there could be maybe, uh, you know, someone who's got uh, two restaurants or a bigger, bigger center. Maybe you've got, a, you know, if you look at a restaurant, maybe some restaurants may be bigger, maybe 50 employees. And you might have maybe a maybe more of a smaller setting, maybe a mom and pop operation where you have one or two employees. So they would before in the bridge grant program get a five thousand dollar grant. We did that four times for upwards of twenty thousand, of course. Um, and so we heard from the business community that there's kind of different needs for different size businesses, and so that's why we uh, uh, made this existing program a little bit different than others. Okay, thank you. Um, and right now, as you're saying, restaurants and gyms are open at 50% capacity. Um, but if the health orders bring them down to 25% capacity or even lower, um, will the money scale in that way as well? Well, what we what we did in, in our budget is we put about $1.1 billion away for contingencies. And that was everything kind of related to the healthcare system, education, kind of social services, but also the business community. So you may recall in our budgetary year, we did it, we had to do a bridge grant program during the third wave, right? Where $79 million Irvin got uh, an additional $5,000 above and beyond what they you know, have gotten through the bridge grant programs uh, that are in place. So um, we've kind of made uh, decisions in terms of uh, what's there. Um, as future health orders may or may not come out, we would obviously work with the business community to make sure it's there and there's some predictability. I think what we're saying to the business community is, is we're there. We want to support uh, businesses that are doing everything they can to, uh, to maintain their business while making sure that people are protected. So absolutely, there'll be uh, additional supports if need be, depending on what the health orders look like. Yeah, we'll continue to engage with them. I mean, uh, we've had routine calls with them, as I said, uh, along with a public health official, and we'll continue to have the dis those discussions. We now return to the News Conference Theatre. Minister Fielding, a couple weeks ago, you provided a fiscal update. Maybe that was months ago. Sorry, time seems to be getting all mixed up lately. Um, the, I know it's, it is far too soon to say what this uh, latest COVID spike is going to do. I know there was money left in the budget for some uncertainty, but where's the, uh, where's the red line here for, for that money getting used up? Well, we, As you begin to see the Omicron projections starting to turn into real case numbers. Right, so, so two things. Um, number one, I mean, businesses, of course, are still um, at this point, obviously, 50% capacity. Right, so they still are open. Appreciate the fact that it's a obviously busy time, especially for restaurants. Um, when we did budget, we we put up we think a, a pretty good amount away for COVID supports, and so so far in the budget year we have about 300 and I think it's uh, 61 million dollars left um, in respect to that. So and that isn't just for the business community or supports, but there is substantial money left to support if we need additional health measures in place, the healthcare system, education, and things like the business community. So. I think we budgeted appropriately. We've got money available, but you know what we did in the first year of the pandemic. If we need additional money, you know our government is really committed to protecting Manitobans. We actually introduced two budget bills uh, to ask for additional appropriations that went through the legislature. So far, we're, we won't, we don't need to do that because we do we did uh, budget appropriately. I guess I would say initially, but we certainly would look at that because our number one goal is to protect Manitobans and really support individuals and businesses. Is there a, an update that also would be made in terms of uh, spending on health in the event that uh, our, we need to start sending folks out of province again, we need to start sending, doing something more innovative in terms of sending non-ICU patients out of, out of province or even out of country for care? 
I know that these are all back of the napkin drawings right now, but can you just talk about that uncertainty on the health line item? Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. So our our budget year ends obviously March 31st for the for the next three months. Uh, we identified about $50 million for, I'll call the backlog, uh, surgical backlog that's there. So far, uh, Health has allocated about $13 million of that. So they provided, I think it's like 8,700 procedures. Um, so, you know, we anticipate money that's that's uh, being used, the $50 million in place for those backlogs. If we need more, again, I kind of identify through kind of a different funding level, $360 million. So we're going to do what it takes to, to really catch up on the backlogs and deal with the day-to-day functioning of the pandemic. As we go forward into the next budgetary year, we're in budget consultations right now. Budget will come out probably in March or the latest April. And so, you know, we're contemplating right now what will be built into the budget for additional COVID supports. Uh, if you ask me right now, do we, are we going to need additional supports for health and education and businesses? Uh, I think the answer is yes, we will. But um, that's decisions we're going to make on the next fiscal year. But we have enough money right now to the end of our fiscal year to make sure people are supported. And we're going to do what it takes to, to get this thing addressed. Uh, you know, we want to make sure Manitobans are protected. And for the backlogs, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, people are getting the surgeries when they, when they need the most. Okay, well, thank you very much, and have a Merry Christmas, and best of the season to everyone. Thank you. Merry Christmas.